Hello, my name is Andreas. Uh, I'm a game designer and I do games since over 20 years. And I decided to try something new and make a small tutorial series uh, about uh, me trying to learn animation and stuff. So um, this is about Control Rig, which is a new feature in Unreal Engine and that helped me to make my prototypes a little bit more vivid. Um, so when you do prototypes like me, you rely a lot on external assets. I didn't, I didn't learn to model properly. I know all the parts. I'm long enough in the industry to understand all the parts, but I never hands on sit down and did that. So 10 weeks ago, I decided to give it a try, especially because I like control rig. It is a way that you can make a rig in engine and animate there and test stuff there. So it's not only great for prototypes, but also for bigger production. So I gave it a try. So what I ended up with is uh, is this little guy. So I did a scorpion. It is a robot because I thought it's maybe wiser to not um, go too deep into weight painting. And that seems to be uh, a complicated topic. That's one reason. The other reason is um, I wanted to have something that is not a two leg um, a character. Uh, maybe it was not the wisest idea to do a six-legged one, um, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the result, which I could only achieve because this tool is pretty great. And um, uh, even for me, as someone who's not an animator, uh, gave me a, a lot of tools to my hand to to do this. So let's uh, let's dive into this. So basically, what I want to do is I, you can follow me. I try to make uh, different parts. I hope they're around 10 to 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, I try to re uh, release them regularly. Um, and I try to uh, explain step by step um, what I'm doing and feel free to add to the comments qu um, your questions to the comments or reach out to me via Twitter or something like that. I'm happy to help and I'm for me this is also kind of learning so it's my very first steps uh, in this uh, YouTube stuff. Um, so le let's uh, let's get started. So first of all, before we go to Blender, now we start with Blender, that's nice. So we start with Blender. So basically um, here you see what I did. So uh, at the end, um, I ended up with a, a skeletal mesh, uh, but it's still, if I go in edit mode and for example, grab a leg, uh, you can still see it. It has much too much polygons. It's it's still, it, it has all faces. That it, this is really at the end not very optimized for a game, but it's fine for my, my purpose. And as I said, I'm learning. I don't show you the UV maps. Uh, maybe at one point later, but it's, it is awful. <laughs> and that's the part I, I still have to get better. But um, basically, uh, what I want to talk about when we go to control rig is a, a little bit about the skeleton. So there's one thing um, that um, gave me a little bit of a headache. Uh, and there is a lot of um, solutions out there in the internet uh, that are really different and I tried them all um, so the problem is that when you bring it uh, a skeleton uh, to Unreal Engine from Blender uh, you might end up with the wrong scale of the bones or the wrong scale of your whole mesh so to prevent that um, it is important to set the scale to 0 0.01 of the whole amateur uh, then you are fine um, so basically oh what it is as far as i understand and i'm still in talks with some people who know better than me um blender is working with unit scale of one meter by default and uh, unreal is working with one centimeter as default so you can set the unit scale in blender uh, to 0 0.01 and apply and for a static mesh that normally works very well uh, so for a skeletal mesh it seems to not apply this scale properly or something else goes wrong but as said, um, if, if your amateur at the end is at 0 0.01 and you don't apply and then export, then you are usually completely fine. So this, this worked for all my cases I had uh, with also with some other project. Second thing I want to talk about is the export setting. So we go to export, FBX and Blender. So there's a lot of good Blender tutorials out there. I don't go there. I'm still learning, so I can't tell you anything about that. But what I basically, what I'm basically doing, so I'm uh, I only export selected objects normally, I select this. So I don't have to care about the transforms when I'm doing this with an with amateur. I don't bake animation. Apply units, I can do or I can't do, it's, yeah, it's up to you. Uh, primary a uh, primary bone axis, so the axis, the bones run to, so like, like, like this one. Um, uh, Unreal expects you to have a X axis as primary bone axis. This is important. And then as secondary bone axis for the rotation, I choose minus Y. And um, that works in all my projects right now. I am not 100% sure if it's like the default setting, but it has to do, and we will see that later when we have imported it, 
uh, and we debug it, I can tell you why this is important for me in my, in my case. And what's also important is to uncheck add leaf bones because what Splendor is doing is at the tip of the bone he's adding new ones and um, that's not what you want. So um, that's it. And then you hit F a a export uh, and then we can switch to the engine. So um, I'm using uh, right now Unreal Engine 4.25.1, uh, which is the newest one. So this is nothing, uh, nothing uh, special. This is just the version you can get out there. Um, and the only thing I made is I made a material for the uh, for the underground. That's it. Um, and as you can see, my scene is pretty empty. So to use Control Rig, uh, you have to go to Plugins first, and then search for Control Rig and enable it because right now this is an experimental feature which means expect a lot to change quality of life features uh, are still missing there's a lot of stuff that is like uh, there's no comfort layer there might be crashes um, and there might be also still some changes uh, to make the whole system better but it works pretty well and is already used in fortnite for some stuff so it's not like um, don't touch it and when you what we also will do is we will make an animation and bake it out inside the engine. Uh, once you have done that, you don't really care for shipping your game um, because it's like you have made it in Maya, Max, uh, Blender or whatever. Um, and um, and all features before, it's, it's really nice. So what I try to do with the series is actually dive into all these different parts. So we will make animation blueprint. We will try to do some procedural stuff, hopefully. Um, and I have some stuff prepared. Maybe we even go to materials and see a little bit how we can have a skeletal mesh with mixer. So I don't know where this goes. It also depends a little bit on the feedback what you like. Um, so character. So let's import that. Um, so here's my scorpion. I import that. And for now, I just take basically the default. So I will generate a new skeletal asset out of uh, the mesh I'm bringing in. Um, I don't create the physical asset automatically. That's something we will do by hand for sure. So there will be one part where we do silly, funny stuff with physical animations. Um, I convert unit scenes uh, and, and that's basically it. And I create new materials. Um, so let's hit import. So what you will see now is there will be maybe a little bit too much materials for such a character. Um, that is due to my lack of knowledge about material and all that. Um, but I have already uh, um, a ver a optimized version. I will I will definitely show in one of the later parts. So let's uh, let's take all the materials and move it out of the way so we can see clearly and easy what we are talking about. So we have our scorpion, um, which is a skeletal mesh, and then we have the uh, skeleton. So when you bring the stuff in it through Unreal Engine, it makes two own assets. So let's let's check this out. So here's our character um, as we brought it in. Here's the materials. Um, and then when I go to the skeleton up here, um, I can see my hierarchy. So here is all my bones. So if I go to here, character, bones, or hierarchy, you can you can see them. That looks basically very good. So when I click them, you can see here the scale. So this is a good indicator to test very uh, at, at the very beginning when you bring something in, is the scale okay? So it should be one. Otherwise, you might have uh, some, some uh, weird... Um, uh, some weird behavior and you don't know why so this is the first thing to do so this is uh, this is basically it so we have it now in and um, when you enable the plugin uh, you find and uh, animation you find uh, control rig so you could create the asset and then you could tell the asset here's a hierarchy you import it step by step so you could do that but there's a convenient function you do just right click and then go here cr create control rig so it's making a new asset and it looks like that so that brings you to the um, a control rig um, a tool. So here we have a preview. It's the same as uh, as, as as we know. Um, and then here we have our hierarchy. Um, so our hierarchy again. If I select the bones here and go to details uh, here, uh, I again can check the scale. So this is something you definitely should should do to see if this is uh, what you expected. So here's a hierarchy. Here's also where I add the controls. Uh, here is something that looks like blueprints. Um, just some words about that. So there's our own virtual machine for control rig, which is more optimized for animation. Um, that also means it is lacking some features for, yeah, that you know from blueprint. The reason is this has to be redone completely for this. So it looks and feels a lot like blueprint, but it's lacking stuff. So people 
uh, might be confused and saying, but I know this from Blueprint, where is this? Yeah, the reason is this has to be done specially for that. For, for that. So um, as, I as I said that, uh, we talked shortly about the hierarchy itself. So here's a, here's a hierarchy and uh, the hierarchy is not a reference. So it is really important. So I can refresh it um, by selecting the mesh. If I, for example, in my case, I had to add some bones. Um, so then my old skeleton is here uh, and I have to refresh it. Um, that's pretty nice because if I've set up all my controls and stuff. It is not relying um, on, on, on this being totally fixed. And if I change it, everything breaks. Um, sure, I have to make some adjustments, but basically that is the philosophy uh, behind that. You can also have different preview meshes if you use a skeleton for different um, uh, skeleton meshes. You can choose which one you want to preview here, which is also pretty nice. Okay, first thing I want to show is the capability of, of debug. I know it's a bit strange to start with debug, but it helped me a lot to understand this. Um, I mean, when you have different 3D programs, it's always a challenge to see which is a coordinate system, what is the scale, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so a really nice note here uh, I want to start with is the draw hierarchy one, because then I can show you a little bit again why I choose minus y as secondary bone axis. So I have uh, the red one is um, the red ones are the uh, the x axis. So this is fine. This is what I want. So the main axis is x, y is to the side and z is always up. So that makes my life a little bit easier thinking about what rotation I'm applying, etc, etc. So um, this is a really, really nice note um, to to test some stuff. So but what I want to do today in this first part Let's do just some forward animation and then um, in the next part we will do some iKey. So to do the very, very basics, um, we want to have a control and this control should control a bone. And we can start with a tail. This is a nice big, um, that's a nice big uh, example. So we, I do a right click and then you do here, you find um, uh, in, in this context menu, you find a new control. So, um, and uh, then I have, uh, let me get out of the way so you can see this. So I have a, um, I have the new control here. So let's, let's name this control like tail control just for start. And then I can bring this in and I get the control and then I have to transform and I can do stuff with it. So the second thing I want to do is I take the tail here. It's my tail, uh, first tailbone. So my tail is actually made of, uh, um, I think it's eight different bones um, and then I have the hand. So let's uh, let's take the tailbone uh, and set the bone transform. Um, so you have to always check if in which space you want to operate. So in our case, we want to have the global space. So if I do this, uh, you can see uh, it is directly jumping to a very strange spot. Uh, and that's the reason I'm currently having some defaults here, which is zero, 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 or it's a translation like that. So get, let's get rid of that. So what you can see here already, which is pretty nice, is you can uh, execute stuff in a certain order. You can test what, is, what it does, etc., and then go from there. So the tail itself, if we want to have, a, uh, if, if we want to have it a usable thing, we should move it first in the position which bone we want to control. So we move it to the uh, near the bone um, um, of the tail and then I do a right click here and then there's set initial transform from closest bone. So I do this and then it copies the transform over. So we have it now at the right position but as you can see it is stuck inside and it's just a ball. So let's make it pretty uh, and more usable. So on the right side here you have uh, the gizmo, so how it looks like. So we can choose from a, a big variety of um, of different uh, things, but you can make an own library um, of of gizmos if you if you want. So circle thick is what we ch what we choose. So this is the orientation is not okay. So here is x axis. So we rotate that ninety degree around x. So then we have it already there, and now it's a little bit too big. So let's um, reduce the size a bit to like this. This looks nice. Okay, compile. So now we have it on the right position, but it doesn't do anything yet. Um, so now uh, we actually um, bring this in and then we use a transform. Uh, we can collapse that back and now it is connected. So what I can do now is I can actually go to rotate and then it is the first time my little uh, scorpion is uh, becoming alive. He can use one part of his tail. But when we propagate to children here, it is 
his complete um, his complete tail. So this is nice. So basically, what I would do now is for every single joint, I could uh, I could add an own control, and then uh, an animator could use this to uh, uh, control control this um, this little character. What we also could do is uh, a, a rare, instead of of um, doing this for one bone, there are some really nice um, solvers. So one solver we can use is distribute rotation. So under hierarchy, you find a lot of nice stuff you can. You can check out and distributed rotation for example uh, is exactly doing what it says it distributes a rotation around a chain of bones so we can say let's say we go from tail 1 to tail 8 and then we add a rotation um, and then here we go to local space now um, and then we put the rotation in we propagate to children so we don't lose any bone and if I do this now Oh, this is so beautiful. So this is something I, if this is what I'm exactly what I meant at the beginning, why I find this pretty, co a pretty cool feature. So even if you are not a hardcore animator and haven't learned all that stuff, first of all, controller can help you learn and understand animation. And second is with just some clicks, I get something that all looks already much more vivid than if I would do this all all by hand. So yeah. That is basically what I wanted to show in the first part. So in the next part, I would talk about uh, IK. So we do the hands, so he can use his hands. Uh, and then we go over to CCD IK for the, for the legs, etc. So we will continue uh, going to what I have shown at the beginning. And then, um, yeah, I, this is, as I said at the beginning, this is a little bit of a test. I also might not do a lot of editing because video editing is something I also have to learn now. Um, so give me a command, uh, reach out to me, uh, give me some feedback, it's nice. And then we see where the series goes. And I think as a, as a YouTuber you have to say, please hit subscribe <laughs> and the bell. Okay, thanks. Thanks for watching and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to interact with you. Bye.